Okay, now we're going to look at decay type problems. One of the first applications, one of the first types of decay problems we're going to look at is going to be the idea of half-life. So half-life, uh, the definition is how long does it take half of something to decay? So if you have a substance, we're talking about how long, how many years does it take, uh, or it could even be seconds or days, how long does it take for half of that substance to decay or erode away? Uh, so with problems like this, we actually have a special K value that we have for half-life problems. The, the, the K value represents our decay constant, and we have a formula to come up with our decay constant. That formula is this one, negative ln2 over the half-life. The half-life, they're going to give you in these problems, so the half-life will always be provided, it's going to be in terms of years. And so if we have this formula, automatically that will tell us what the decay constant or the K value is going to be. So we need to know that in order to come up with a decay function. The basic one we're going to look at is this one, a of 0 e to the kt. This is our basic formula we've been using for our growth and decay, uh, for both growth and decay problems. We've done a bunch of problems already with growth. That's the same formula we're going to use here. The only difference now is our k value is going to be negative, and we can see from the formula that you, you do have a negative in there, and so that makes sense that our k value is negative because it's a type of decay. We want to find out what the K value is in this case. Now when you look at the problem, we've got strontium 90 and we have a 28 there. You want to use a 28 years. That's your half-life. The 90 is actually part of the name. It's, it's an isotope name. So strontium 90 is the whole name of the substance we're looking at. The 90 is not used anywhere in the problem at all. That's just the name of the substance. So we want to use 28. So we put that in there. K equals negative ln2 over 28. If we put that into a calculator and we round to four places like before when we found our K value, we always want to use four places, you get this, negative point zero two four eight. We need to know that now in order to do this problem here. So we have to put it back into the formula and come up with the exact decay function that goes along with the information that's provided. Now the A of zero, that's the amount that you're originally starting with. In order to find that, we actually have to look at part B. Part B says how much of a 10 gram sample remains after 11 years. So the 10 grams right here, that's what we put in there for the A is zero. That's the original amount we're starting with. You have E and then the K, we just found it here. Negative point zero two four eight, and that's gonna be T. So this right here, this is the answer to part A. That's your decay function. Um, that would be specific to this problem. If you're starting with, with 10 grams, we have something now where if you put in any amount of time, that will give us an estimate for how much is left at that certain time. So we're going to use that to answer part B. How much 11, 10 gram sample remains after 11 years? This means that you're going to put 11 years into the time. So we're going to do A of 11 is going to equal 10 E. We have our K value, negative point zero two four eight. Put in 11 for the T value, that's the amount of years they want to figure out, they want to ask you how much is there after 11 years. You work with the exponent part first, so we're going to do 10 E, we're going to multiply that together, uh, and if you multiply that together, you're going to get negative 0.2728 when you multiply that uh, out, and then you're going to put that whole part into your calculator and you're going to get approximately 7.61 grams, so you can check that out on your calculator on your own just to make sure you're getting the the correct amount there, but it's always good to do the exponent part first, then you can put the rest of it in your calculator, and so this would answer part B. So after 11 years, it's 7.61. Now let's, let's talk about that to make sure that that answer makes sense. So what does it mean by half-life? Well, that means that if I were to put 28 exactly into here for T, that means I should actually get 5 grams, because we know that uh, at 28 is how long it takes for a half of something to decay. So if I put in exactly 28 in here, I should expect 5 for the answer. Well, we haven't quite reached 28 years. We're only at 11 years. So it makes sense that our answer should be more than 5 because not half of it has decayed yet. So this answer would definitely make sense for the conditions that we have for this problem.